So lead code 946 validates stack sequences. So you're given these two sequences and you need to output true if those could be the result of the inputs and the outputs of pushing and popping from a stack. So for example here, uh, this the output is true because you could pop, you could push into the stack one, two, three, and four, then you could pop four, and then you could push five and then pop all of the elements in reverse because the stack is first in, first out. Okay, so the trick in solving this problem is keeping a simulated stack and on that stack you actually do the operations and you actually need to iterate through the popped array instead of the pushed array. So for every element in the popped array, you can check if the last element in your simulated stack is equal to the current popped element. And if so, then you know for sure that you can now pop that element from your simulated stack. And that's because we know that there are distinct values. Okay, so now you know if, if you see the same value in your current popped element and the last element in your simulated stack, then okay, it's fine. You can proceed to the next one after popping that element from the end of the stack. And so you go to the next one and you do the same thing over and over again until you get to the end of the popped array. But what if it is not equal? So we see a four, we have our simulated stack and maybe it's empty or the thing there is maybe for example one instead of four. What do we do in that case? Since it's a stack, we cannot go backwards. So the only thing that we can do is we can push more elements in the stack. And hopefully at some point we will also push the element that we are searching for. So for example, if our simulated stack was one and we see that we need a four, what we do is we push all of the elements until we get to a four. And if we get to a four, then we can pop it and then proceed with the next one and so on. But if you never get to a four, so for example here, maybe there was a six or something, then you would be going out of bounds in the pushed array. And in that case, you need to return false. So let's implement that solution. So we're going to have our simulated stack and then we're going to loop through all of the popped elements and here just don't use a P so that there's no clashing in the names. Okay, and now what you do is while the last element in your simulated stack is different from the element that you're currently looking for, then you want to push even more elements from the pushed array to your stack, to your simulated stack, right? So while it is different, we keep pushing in more elements. And at the end of this, while loop, we're going to be sure that the last element in the stack is equal to the element that we're looking for. And so when we get out of this loop, we can be sure that we can pop from our stack and we can get to the next popped element, right? So now we just need to make sure that here we are pushing in, in our stack, all of the elements from the pushed array. And to do that, we can push the first element in the pushed array. So we shift it, right? So we remove the first element, we get to the next one and we push it to the stack. Now, the only problem here happens when pushed is empty. So if we, if we have no elements in our pushed array, then unfortunately we're going to have to return false. Because this means that we were looking for, for example, a four, but we haven't found it. So we started maybe here and then we went forward and pretended that here there was a nine or something and you get to the end of the array, you've pushed all of the elements in your pushed array, you've pushed them all to the stack, but you haven't found what you were looking for. So you need to return false. Okay, perfect. But hopefully at some point pushing the shifted element from the push array will result in this condition being false. So the while stops because you have the last element in your stack is equal to the element that you're looking for. And so you can pop it from the stack. And if this keeps happening for all of the popped elements, then it means that it's a perfectly valid sequence. And so you can return true, right? So if you never happen to get to this case, if you never happen to get to the return false statement, then you can return true. And that's all there is to it. So I'll submit the solution to share it works, but there's one more optimizations that we, we can have. So instead of shifting the elements and actually editing the pushed array, what you can do is you can just keep an index that moves forward in the array 
and then just access the array with that index. So like this, you just keep an index, starts at zero, and every time you increment it by one, so instead of shifting the array, we just access it at an ever increasing index. And then you just need to change the is empty statement and the pushed array is considered to be empty when your pointer has gone out of the bounds of the valid indices to index that array, okay? So yeah, you just need to change this line and use a pointer to access the array and the rest of the code is the same. And this way, the time complexity is O of N guaranteed and the space complexity is still O of N. Some people in the discuss tab say they have a O of one solution in space complexity but they are editing the input, which I do not consider to be O of 1 space complexity. So that's it for me today. Thank you for watching and bye.